It's episode 32 of Higher Living. And today, get out that popcorn, roll one up, take a drop, medicate however you wish, and come on this little journey with us today. Because there's there's so much that's going on. There's so much that's going on that we're going to break away from how we typically present to get into some of the goss that we see happening in the industry and within areas of medicine that are important to us. And the reason why we're going about this is because what you're going to hear so much, and I've been hearing this for years, and let me tell you about that. I'm not going to ba- we're not going to ramble too much because I got some feedback the other day, but I think this is pivotal. Back in 2021, talking to an Australian cannabis company, I'm not going to mention who, and they said to me on the phone, they said, Chad, all we're focused on is patience. We're so patient-centric. We put patients first, and you're going to hear this a lot. Patients first, patients first, patients first. Just like pull that back a little bit and have a look at their actions and behaviors, and then really then that will be the judge of how focused they are on patients. This company, Chad, we're all about patients led me to ask some questions. And I said, oh, so what sort of options have you got for your patients? And they said, oh, we haven't thought about the patients yet. We're going to get to them. (laughs) We're putting patients first. Yeah, it's just a bit of a slogan. Why We're doing this, and you're listening to this, because we think it's important that you're aware of what goes on. We're only hearing a lot, and increasingly we're hearing a little bit more about what goes on and You wouldn't believe some of the stories that occur within the industry. And this is the Australian industry. This is a, this is in the global industry. You would not, I, I think there's a concentration of things that go on in terms of ethics. And when you're aware of that on the inside, and we're not here, we're not going to name names today. We're not going to talk about any of these companies that we know, right? That's not what we need to do. But what we're sharing with you, the reason we're doing this is because you can see whatever you want around an image. People can present that to you. But if you peel that back a little bit and you see unethical practices, it kind of gives you a bit of a sense about why the industry is where it is. See what I'm saying? And the reason we're going, like, let's let's then shift into that. Let's shift into to where we're going to go. And, and in terms of ethics and one of the reasons we're coming up here, did you ever watch that Netflix series that was based on the Michael Pollan book, How to Change Your Mind? Amazing, amazing series on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Maybe it's still there. If it's not, see how you can find it because you want to get your eyes on that. It's a wonderful presentation of a range of different psychedelic medicines and it it's really captivating. And I, I love the final section and how they wrap it up, particularly around the use of peyote and the controversy that surrounds that for cultural reasons. So it's it's highly recommended that you watch that. And part of that, there is a section on ketamine and there is a psychiatrist that we're putting up here that uh, was touring around Australia, very, very prominent on the conference circuit. And at the same time, while, while that was occurring, there has just been news released that he's He's got a 12 months suspension from being able to practice uh, that has come through. There's circumstances that have gone on. He is showing remorse. He's saying that his heart got his better than he's, that he's had. He knows he's, he's made mistakes and you will be entitled to your own judgment around what happened and whether or not 12 months is too harsh, whether it sounds about right or whether he should have completely lost registration particularly being mindful of the criteria to receive psychedelic medicines in this day and age is that you need to be, you need to be unwell, right? And, and generally it's a, it's a mental illness. And so, yeah, there's some questions. A lot of the community seems to be a little bit split around this. And again, we're not here to go into it and give too much commentary, but it's, we think it's essential to have a look at that, then utilize that as a broader topic to then go into different areas. The big area that we're going to look at is ethics in the Australian industry. And to set that up, I've got a team at on tracker that is, that are my scientific advisors. So on a weekly basis, and we have done for many years, we talk about a whole range of areas. They're two of the best that are in the field and they've been guiding a lot of my decision-making and guiding me in these last few years. And when we were, sharing 
some detail around what occurs in the Australian market and some of the kickbacks that occur. Yes, if you didn't know, a lot of the industry is based on kickbacks. Uh, we could probably do a full story on that, but there's plenty of information that you can see. And when you he- when you when you speak to someone that's been in healthcare, been in clinical trials, been in the pharmaceutical world, and you say that there isn't really independent prescribing, and that there are very you know significant breaches of ethics that are involved, it's it's very hard for individuals to comprehend that that goes on, and it's just accepted as the norm. That said. There is a word that some of this is going to change. So there is a belief that in the next, within two months, there's going to be a major shakeup in the Australian industry around some of the practices that occur. And what's interesting at the same time, when there was a survey that was recently done, a lot of patients were fairly satisfied with services, right? So there's two ways to look at this. If patients if patients are feeling satisfied in the in the option of what they what they want and how they want to access cannabis, well, you've kind of got to then get behind that and think about what are the models, and that can be a deeper conversation around how we go that how we go about that, right? And the biggest point before I continue to go on is that whether or not this news is going to break, whether or not some companies are going to get exposed, whether or not we're going to see major changes as a result of a shakedown. You as a patient need to be more mindful about your your choices, who you trust, and who you're going to be providing your funds to, right? So as a consumer, which you are, even though you're a patient, you decide with your money where that goes. And so if you can find out stories about companies that aren't acting ethically and aren't doing the right thing, do you want to continue supporting them? Should they be in the game? That's, that's something that you can directly impact. Now, are, are a lot of peak companies going to stay in the game? Another thing coming out of Australia, Can Group, you know, whether or not we look into this in too much detail, there is word that this is the end of Can. There's other perspectives that say that this isn't really the end of them at all. Protecting shareholders on the ASX, who are a lot of like considered mum and dad investors, and that it isn't going to lead to the end of Can. There's plenty that's going to be coming through new team and structure has been able to be overtaken and some of those results will support the company to kind of move forward. So there's two ways to look at this. One is shock value, cans going out of business. What ripple effect is that going to have across the rest of the industry? The other one is don't always believe what you see. They're all okay. So again, as a consumer, whether that impacts you too much, the big emphasis is again is on being informed about what is happening so you can make the best decisions to finish up, and this may be a, a controversial one for some of you, and not it's not meaning to be at all. We're not like going for shock value here, uh, but there's just a few things that are going on at the moment which kind of warrant us to come on, share a few things with you just to kind of get you thinking, right? And, and the final one is around <laughs> an online, an online uh, I don't want to say beef, but there are uh, two individuals One, Andrew Tate, has come out this week and kind of been blasted by his own community, which is interesting because you see a lot of the fans that support him get really, really behind him because they need to. They need to defend their positioning. But he came out with this post um, where he said he would prefer a friend that uses meth to cannabis, and which is what is what we think is interesting about this is that his community blasted him, right? (laughs) His community blasted him. And, you know, it's a really outdated perspective that he has. Um, You know, it's that whole typical laser stoner type. So it's a very outdated stereotype, which shows, you know, a lack of relevance to what's going on at the moment. That said, that said, the next person that we're going to bring up is Seth Rogen, seen by many in the cannabis industry as, oh, Seth. Right. And one of the things that he's come out with is is the following. Hi, it's me, Seth. And this is the party ashtray from Houseplant. It's perfect for people who want to smoke weed with two of their friends or for people who like to smoke three joints at once like me. And the question that we need to be thinking about, well, I think is 
this isn't the medical patient, right? And this narrative doesn't do anything, anything for looking at how patients can benefit and what we're going to do to patient education and how we're going to look at prescribers and giving actual prescribers education around this. If the poster person is just, hey, I can just get high wherever I want. What's that about? Right. I, you know, that is, that's, that's really not the lane that we are in. And it makes, it makes you think who, who should be ambassadors, right? Who are ambassadors for this plan? Who, who are ambassadors for this movement and this, this medicine that we all believe in? And the reality is it's you, Right. It's not celebrities. Yeah, of course, they have a role to play and they always are going to. But you are the ambassador for your journey. You are the ambassador that can teach people about how cannabis can be used. You are the ambassador about how we can reintegrate this medicine into community without having these outdated views that seem to exist. That's some questions for you today to consider. My name is Chad. This is Higher Living. This is episode 32, proudly brought to you by OnTracker. Thank you.